time to Mackenzie to. Thanks, Tree. <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to start with the university's uh, introduction. Then I will pass the time to Dr. Mackenzie to talk about the uh, course. And then we will be having uh, our alumni joining us later today to share his experience. Um, and last but not least, it would be our Q&A sessions. So if you have any questions uh, that you haven't put in your registration and you can uh, you think of some new questions, please feel free to put it in the Q&A box. Okay, so a short introduction about Tasmania. So Tasmania is actually on the south side of Australia. So you can see from the map here, uh, we are on the south side of Australia. From Sydney to Tasmania, it would be one and a half hours flight. And from Melbourne to Tasmania, it would be one hour's flight. So for today's course, uh, we are going to focus on Bachelor of Pharmacy with Honours. So the course is actually available in all the three campuses in Tasmania. So we have Hobart, which is on the south side of Tasmania, and we also have Launceston Campus and also Cradle Coast Campus. So the course would be exactly the same, running in three different locations. And some of you have asked uh, questions about our international scholarship. So I've included two scholarships that would be applicable to our Bachelor of our Pharmacy. So the first uh, scholarship would be our Tasmanian International Scholarship, which would be a merit-based scholarship. So you don't need to put in a separate application to the scholarship. Uh, we are going to do the assessment um, automatically when you are submitting the applications. So it would be a 25% scholarship. Um, and if you can progress to year two and year three with a credit average, you would be able to keep the scholarship for the whole duration of your course. And also we have the uh, free 20 weeks of English support. So for those students that would need some English support before the course, we are having uh, up to 20 weeks free English support for our students. And again, this would be uh, automatic, uh, automatically, automatically applied to your offer. So if uh, you are getting an offer with English, you will see uh, um, there is no course uh, related to the um, associated with the uh, English course. And for student living, um, most of our students are actually staying with us on campus. So we do have our own uh, on-campus accommodation, which would be a very safe choice and a very secure options for our students. So we do have dedicated staff. Um, they are um, working from 9 to um, 12 in the accommodation. So in case your student or yourself have any uh, questions that you want some support from our staff, um, you can always feel free to, um, go to go to our staff. And it's actually a very affordable living options as well. So I have included some uh, the cost of the living in later slides. And uh, we do offer some short-term uh, accommodation options for students that want to stay with us for short-term before they uh, go on to find their own private accommodation. So um, these photos are showing um, one of our accommodation in Hobart. Um, it would be some photograph of our Melville Street accommodation. So it, it's a very modern accommodation. Um, students would have their common facilities. Um, they can chat with their peers and their, uh, their um, like tutors, mentors, and they can cook together and enjoy some good facilities in, in Maple Street. So here are the costs for the accommodation. So for Melville Street and Hobart Apartment, they are located in the central business area of uh, Hobart. And we also have our own accommodation in Sandy Bay Campus and also Launceston as well. So it depends on the room types that you are looking for. We do have some single rooms option and also studio options for our students. 
Also, um, when students joining us, uh, apart from the academic support, we do have some uh, social activities for our students to join. So we have more than 130 student clubs for our students to choose from. And in case you can't find any clubs that you are interested in, um, you can feel free to add, um, to approach to our student union and the student union would be happy to assist you in setting up all, on your uh, of your own clubs. And accommodate uh, like for the um academic support, I will leave the time uh I leave the academic support part to Mackenzie to talk about more about the uh, academic support um that you are going to receive during your course. And also we are supporting our students um, psychologically as well. So in case that um, your students want uh, some um, psychological support and also counsel, uh, counseling service, we do have it available on campus. And quite a lot of you are interested in knowing more about the career supports that are offered in Utah as well. So we have our one-stop shop, our careers connect located in the campus. So for students that want to browse some casual work, part-time work or graduate work uh, opportunities, um, there are job, uh, careers connects that are available to help our students. So students um, can go to careers connects to ask for some uh, support in their CV writing and also interview skills support as well. And we do encourage our students to participate in some volunteer work experience during their time in Utah, as um, this would help them to like uh, engage with the community and it would help them in future careers as well. Okay, so that's all from my part. I will pass the time to Mackenzie. I will stop sharing from my side first. Hi, Nag. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Mackenzie Williams, and as uh, Whitney mentioned before, I am the course coordinator for the Bachelor of Pharmacy with Honours here at the University of Tasmania. I'm also a practising pharmacist myself, so um, I have a lot of you know, real world experience that I can um, help um, our students along in their um, career paths. Okay, I will just share my screen. There we go. Okay, um, so just a little bit about um, the pharmacy course and also um, some of the student support um, and other things that we offer uh, at the University of Tasmania. So uh, just an acknowledgement of country. So we acknowledge the Palawa Pakana of Lutruwita, the traditional owners of the land upon which we live and work. We pay respects to elders past, present and as the knowledge holders as sharers. And we honour their strong culture and knowledge as vital to the self-determination, well-being and resilience of their communities. We stand for a future that profoundly respects and acknowledges Aboriginal perspectives, culture, language and history. So a little bit about what pharmacists do. Um, so I understand that, you know, healthcare systems are a little bit different in every country. Uh, here in Australia, the, the most um, pharmacists probably work in community or hospital pharmacy, but there is certainly, there is certainly uh, expanding roles uh, in lots of different areas um, in pharmacy in Australia. So some of the things that we do in all types of pharmacy work that we would um, engage in, is developing um, uh, caring, collaborative relationships with our patients and with other healthcare providers, uh, improving health outcomes by using our medication knowledge uh, and also helping with prevention and management of diseases, ensuring that the supply of medic medicinal products, um, that they're good quality, and we also provide a lot of information or counselling uh, on the rational use of drugs to patients and others involved in healthcare. 
Some pharmacists are involved in conducting research on areas uh, from developing medicines to how they work in the body um, and how patients use them in practice um, to be safe and effective. We provide our services in a wide range of settings um, and certainly in the Australian healthcare system, pharmacists are the most accessible part. So um, a patient can walk into one of our community pharmacies and they can uh, get help that they need without an appointment and without charge. So pharmacists play an important role in healthcare. Uh, we work alongside other healthcare professionals to help people successfully manage their help hair health, um, we are the medication experts. So where there are medicines being used in the healthcare system, there should be a pharmacist. And the thing that I love about pharmacy is that we have a, such a wide range of job opportunities. Uh, working hours are very flexible. Uh, we can work in multiple areas. So um, I'll get to it a bit later, but most of our academics actually still engage in um, hospital or community pharmacy work um, or uh, you know, a few other areas that they work in. But yeah, most of us do um, tend to um, work part-time for the university and then the other parts of the week uh, we are working as a pharmacist. Um, we also have the opportunity to travel and work overseas as well. Uh, so a little bit about the course. Um, we were the, well, the, we're currently the only university to offer a pharmacy degree in three years. Um, with others, um, we'll, they will follow our progressive model, but um, most other courses are offering four years, um, the standard four-year course. We are now offering three years. Uh, during those three years, the students will get 450 hours of professional experience placements. Uh, that might be in Tasmania, uh, wider in Australia, uh, and there is a few uh, international placements. This year, we're running um, international placements to Canada and New Zealand, for example. In first year, they'll do about 10 hours of placements where they'll visit um, community pharmacies and hospital pharmacies. And in second year, that's when the placements really do kind of take off. Um, they have full weeks um, of placement in community and hospital pharmacies. Um, they also do clinical rounds in uh, one of the units and that involves them going to the hospital um, like reading all of the patient notes, speaking to a patient and looking through drug charts and actually learning what um, a hospital pharmacist does. In third year, we go even further. So there's more of that type of placement. There's more hospital rounds. There is more um, community and hospital placements. Um, there's also a visit to alcohol and drug services uh, and an RMMR visit, which is where they go into an aged care facility um, and review an elderly patient and, you know, speak to the patient, um, look at their drug chart and, um, you know, get involved in their health um, our placement partners include the Department of Health. So um, all UTAS students uh, have a place um, at one of the hospitals. So they've got the opportunity to visit um, and do their placement at one of the Tasmanian hospitals. Uh, we also have heaps of community pharmacies across the state that um, we've got very good relationships, such as Chemist Warehouse, um, Terry White Chemart, uh, as part of our course, we also um, get the students to a certain point where they are close to being um, approved to be a vaccinating pharmacist and also a medication review pharmacist. So we can't finish those particular areas within the degree, but they're as close as they could get. And then they have to have some you know, real world experience before they can um, put those uh, nominals after their name. Uh, we also have a quite a big research component in our course as well. Um, so this little table here is all of the uh, units that a student studying the Bachelor of Pharmacy with Honours um, will complete. The amount of curriculum taught doesn't hasn't changed since we moved from a four-year course to a three-year course. Um, so there's um, still 400 unit points um, of uh, subject matter. 
The good thing is we've also expanded campuses. Previously, we're just on Hobart campus, but now we offer the course at Hobart, Launceston and Cradle Coast, which is up in the northwest of Tasmania um, in, on the Burnie, uh, in the Burnie city. We worked it out that students get about 15 weeks of holidays throughout the academic year. So they will be doing three trimesters, but they will get um, three to four break, three to four week um, break between each of those trimesters. Uh, our program has a strong balance of face-to-face -face teaching in the classroom, um, online studies, as well as time in the community and hospital um, on the placements. And as I mentioned before, most of our academics still work in industry, um, whether that be community pharmacy, hospital pharmacy, review pharmacist. Um, and yeah, so they still continue to work that um, other position as well as the university. Okay, so we, we do really um, have a good student support team um, working with the School of Pharmacy and Pharma. Ecology, um, but we also have um, the uni what UTAS can offer as well. Uh, so there's just a couple of um, you know courses that they, that students can potentially do before they start with us. Um, UniStart is one of those courses, so it's uh, a self-paced introduction to university to help the students um, learn how to study with confidence. Uh, we've got student advisors. Um, as the course coordinator, I have a lot of contact with our student advisors um, to help students through, you know, certain issues that they might be having um, uh, while they're doing the course. There's a 24 hours um, study support, so you can um, submit your assignment for feedback. Um, there's le um, the learning and academic skills um, support team. Uh, so they can answer specific questions about um, the course if needed. Uh, we also have PASS, which is the peer assisted study sessions. There um, are two pharmacy unit or well, pharmacy exclusive units that are under the PASS system. Um, and there's also two of the human anatomy units that are also under the PASS system. Anyway, what that is, is um, it's students that have previously passed that unit uh, running tutorials about the content um, for current students. Uh, so it's really helpful to um, for the students to talk to students who've just completed that unit um, and get some additional uh, academic support for that particular content. Okay, so to enter into our program, um, oh, sorry, the prerequisites are um, the Australian equivalent Oh, sorry, the equivalent of an Australian year 12, uh, you must have maths and chemistry um, included in those units. With the IELTS, um, it's to get into university, it's 6.5. Um, however, in order to register, which I'll talk about in a moment, so to register as a pharmacist, you actually need a higher level. Uh, so that is 7.5 with no group being less than um, 7.0. Uh, the approximate cost of the course per semester is about 19225 Australian dollars. Um, and I'm not sure about this, but the pathway option, um, there's a foundation program available. So um, our Bachelor of Pharmacy with Honours is recognised Australia-wide. Uh, many students choose to undertake their intern employment in Tasmania. There is a lot of op opportunities for that, uh, but some of them do go interstate um, and end up practising in one of our other states of Australia. We have 100% employment success for our graduates. So they leave uni and within three months, 100% of them have started a full-time internship position. Uh, many of our international students decide to remain um, in Australia and continue to work here once they're registered. Some of the international students have decided to return home in the past um, and our degree is recognised in countries such as Canada and Malaysia. Um, this is just a handful of where some of our students go uh, both on placement and then where they will undertake their year-long internship. Um, so the 
process to becoming a registered pharmacist in Australia. Um, most students that undertake a Bachelor of Pharmacy with honours, uh, their aim is to become a registered pharmacist. So how that works is they complete their three-year Bachelor of Pharmacy with honours with us. Um, they then go into full-time employment as an intern. Um, that is supervised hours um, and it equates to what is it, 1,824 hours over the year. Uh, so basically 48 hours of full-time work um, and then they sit their registration exams. Now there's two exams that um, a BFARM graduate would need to sit in order to become a registered pharmacist. There is an oral board exam. So it's basically a counselling exam um, to make sure that... <laughs> They can interact with patients correctly in um, in the you know future workplace, um, and they those exams are held three times a year, and you are able to apply for sitting the oral exam uh, after you've done seventy five percent of those supervised hours. There's also a written exam that um, interns need to sit. It's a two hour. Uh, 75 multiple choice question exam and that runs I think monthly all throughout the year so there's multiple times that um, students can do that one. Once you've successfully passed both of those exams and you've done your supervised hours uh, you can register as a pharmacist in Australia. And that's all from me so I think um, Nack's going to talk about um, his experience. Thank you. Thanks, Mackenzie. So, yeah, the session. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. So, welcome, Nak. So, it's our pleasure to have one of our experienced alumni, Nak, joining, joining us today. So, um, we will be doing it in a casual interview format. So, Nak can answer our questions that we got from our audience. So welcome back. Um, so can you um start with telling us some more background of yourself? Uh you're on milk. Yeah. Okay. Hello everybody. Oh hello. Okay, so can we start with um telling us some uh background of yourself? Certainly, certainly. Um first first, hello everybody. <laughs> nice meeting you. Um my name is Nat. I am from South Korea and I've been a pharmacist for 10 years in Australia. I certainly graduated from uh UTAS. Um, so my background is obviously South Korean. Uh, I came down to Australia back in 2005 as a backpacker. And I had a quite a bit, a bit of experience here and there. Um, but then I decided to study in Australia, um, something different uh, that I never um, had. So I um, contacted UTAS. Obviously, they uh, gave me a right path, um, so the language school for a couple of months and then a uh, foundation course to get to the uh, university degree because I never studied any science back in uh, back in South Korea. Um, so I met a couple of different, um, quite a few different uh, students from all over the world and uh, we had a really, really good relationship and uh, all of us went to the uh, degree that we hoped for. So um, obviously a um, bit of a struggle because I never studied um, uh, any um, high school <laughs> studies in Australia. So it's quite a different education system as well and also a learning system. Um, um, but then again, it does, really helped me to become a, a pharmacist uh, where I can meet uh, all the people from community and um, help them 
and also got help. So it's a fantastic journey that I become a community pharmacist. And um, yeah, I'm really um, happy that I'm, I'm here now. Okay, Nak. So you mentioned that you have been a backpacker uh, before you finally choose Tasmania to settle. So why would you choose Tasmania? Because Tasmania, compared to South Korea, is very different. It is certainly, uh, but it's it's such a nice, it's such a beautiful place. Um, whoever visit Tasmania, South, uh, North or South, you will immediately love it. It's just so, the nature. Um, it's incredible. It's it's beautiful. Wow, there is no other word. And I just fell fell in love with the um all the sceneries. Yeah, immediately. And also plus the people. People, um, it's nice people that really do care each other. And the community is lovely, lovely. Um, yeah, so they, the, everything just worked together. And yeah, it was right for me. Um, I lived in Seoul and it was pretty competitive. And I decided to have a breath and a break and then yeah, so it was right for me. Okay, so you fall in love with Tasmania before you choose Utah, right? So you choose Tasmania, and we are the only university in Tasmania. That's why you choose Utah. And actually, it's a very different from your background because you mentioned that you haven't done any science during your high school in Korea. So do you think... um? The short, um, how long did you take the foundation? Did you take a full year, the standard foundation before joining our, okay, so you have taken the uh, standard foundation. How do you feel? Is is it very hard to adjust? And in the beginning, yet yeah, it was. It was, as I said, it was different. Uh, there was, a, uh, in South Korea, you we go to classroom, we, we listen to the teacher or uh, lecturer, what they say, and then we take a note down and then try to memorize what they try to do. But in, in, in Australia, we, that was a lot of discussions and also a lot of talking. Um, And it was like wide open session. That was a little bit different. Uh, um, but then again, um, it was, Bearable. It was actually um the the progress progression in myself was pretty I uh, caught up pretty quick and um yeah so it, it was much better than I expected. I thought I was going to struggle by um the mid year and then um the final the the end of year was um was I was not nothing different from other students from any other countries. So yeah. That's very good to know because quite a lot of our attendees are asking uh, whether it would be very difficult for international students to do pharmacy. And some of them are asking whether it would be very difficult for international students to get a job and get an internship in Tasmania. Well, look, once you graduate, there's no uh, barriers because you have your degree. You have uh, the same opportunities as everybody. So at the moment, I guess getting a job, it's it's pretty easy, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Because um, we are massive short in, uh, in uh, pharmacists everywhere in Australia. Um, yeah, so, and the good thing about uh, Utah's program is you have lots of opportunities and uh, to experience pharmacists. And also during student years, you can also work at any um, community pharmacy and experience it, which will um, obviously um, accelerate your learning experience and also help you to get a job um, in the future as well. So it's, um, it's yeah, I guess it's pretty, um, yeah. That's uh, very, very convincing because your experience um as an international student uh how to get a job in Tasmania so 
quite a lot of our uh, attendees are actually because they they are only hearing Utah's from us. So now they can hear Utah's from someone that have experienced Utah's of uh, being a students and get all the experience during their placement and internship. So have you, um, I think uh, as Mackenzie has mentioned before, um, for our placement, uh, it would have some um, hospital component and also some um, community pharmacy component as well. So for yourself, why would you choose to become a pharmacist in um, clinical, uh, like um, a community pharmacy instead of a hospital setting? Um, it comes from uh, from nature of mine. I um I love always love to engage people. I I had a bit of experience in um hospital as well in the uh the um private sector, but um I more like to have uh have my my patient in the community so that I uh, uh um acknowledge uh, uh Mr Smith or Mrs Smith. How are you? And um, I try to have a good relationship with the patient. Therefore, I can involve in um, and I, I can um, be part of the community that I can uh, make a change there. So that was I fought in love. But I found it myself that from my fourth year um, um, placement, fourth year placement at, at Terry White down in Kingston, and I uh, met this pharmacy, Andrew. And I love him, and he was um he was fantastic, and um he had a very very good relationship with his uh, patients. Everybody knows Andrew, and then everybody loved Andrew, and they they just open up everything to Andrew. They share their uh, family history. They share uh, everything the individual things uh that and Andrew must know. And therefore, he can involve in not only the medication, but also the uh, mental health part and all the other parts as well. That which which I was fascinated. Um. So then after that, yeah, I um, <laughs> I'm chasing after him. So yeah, that's that's you know, that's why I oh, love okay. it. Oh okay, yeah. okay. So it's the fourth year's placements change mm. the yeah. whole yeah. journey. <laughs> Okay, yeah. interesting. So did you stay on in Andrew's pharmacy to for your internship as well? Unfortunately, I already had um a contract with the other pharmacies, so I didn't end up with the um uh with Andrew. But uh late in the years I uh I had opportunity to have a job uh at the Terry White pharmacy. But unfortunately, Andrew left. He became a um, GP pharmacist. Sorry, I didn't meet him again. But occasionally, I um, see him. Okay, okay, okay. I see. So did you actually secure your internship during your placement? Yes, I did. Yes. It's oh, okay. um, not only the uh, placement, but uh, well, as I said, you can have you can work uh, while you study. Um, so it's not only the fourth year, our third year, second year, um, there are a lot of students working in the community pharmacies. They, they pretty much, they if they want to uh, stay and then become an intern and then the pharmacy wants, wants to hire an intern and you are, yeah, so already set up before you graduate. So, okay. So actually, you you when during your time as a student, you already get some casual job experience in a pharmacy. Yes, I did indeed, as okay. does most of pharmacy students does. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. So um, can I? I guess you have shared some part of your life as a pharmacist, like communicate with the patients, see some of things. So, what would you um? Do you have any advice for our future student? And what can students expect during their time with Utah's? And like some of the students are actually quite worry because like pharmacy sounds to be a very hard course. So they do want to know more from 
a mm. student and a senior and uh, experienced pharmacist prospective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, there was quite, quite a, uh, it's a few, a few uh, different things I want to point out. Um, when I see uh, students, um, it's, I guess it's all about attitude to learn. Um, um, obviously the um, student life and um, the real life is a bit different. And um, whoever wants to learn and, and um, learn from the experienced pharmacist or also the experienced pharmacy assistant and to improve themselves in all the aspects. That's that's the um the attitude that we always look for. Um so it's all about can do as attitude the first. The I fully understand that all the international students that they were worrying they are studying uh, pharmacy and it's hard to study like full time. But um it is the same as all other um university degrees. Um but the beauty about the pharmacy degree is not not all about learning knowledge, but also it's communication with others. So um during pharmacy course you have a lot of interaction with other uh students, a lot of interactions with your lecturers. You have a tons of um opportunities. And also, if you work in the uh, community pharmacy or do uh, do other jobs, you have uh, another chance to uh, talk, and I uh, um, and that's the beauty of I guess the pharmacy. It's not all about the uh, become a knowledgeable person, but also um, a good communicator. It's part of um. It's sort of not the um fully science and fully uh, <laughs> the other part. It, it's sort of a mixture. Um, I, I, and I loved it. Um, again, I need to point out my uh, placement experience. Uh, first year, second year was theory study. I find myself, oh, this probably not, I'm not doing well, <laughs> I, I thought. But third, it become third year and they start placement. I, I loved it. It's, uh, you, uh, um, the the actual working pharmacists came to uh, the tutorial session and then they they taught us and they uh um they guide us how to communicate with patient and uh, introduce new skills introduce new uh, communication skills and here is everything that was all all new and that was fantastic and I um I and I learned from that I can apply into my uh the workplace at the next day and it worked it was fantastic so um it i i encourage everybody who wants to um uh come to australia or come to utah to study um it's uh, study wise yes you need to study but also uh uh you are not only a study machine, but also be a friend of someone and then be part of community as well. So it's um, it it's as I say, it's kind community, very open, and you'll be all welcome. So don't be afraid, please. Thanks, Nat. That's a very good advice because we always encourage our students to get involved in the community as like. You are part of the community. If you are participating in more like casual job and also volunteer work experience, you are more likely to get a job in the future. So that's something that we uh, keep telling our students to do it when they are studying with us. Yeah, that's a very good advice for our students. So last question. Why would you choose to stay in Australia instead of going back to Korea? <laughs> ah, yeah, good question again. Um, I guess it's the lifestyle difference. The lifestyle difference is the biggest factor. 
Um, the South Korea uh, was, as I say, it was busy, very, very busy. And you are, are bounded to uh, your workplace. And, and it's very competitive society. So the, your, your um, work and life balance is sometimes not a, what you wish it for. Uh, but in Australia, so you, you also you work hard, but however, you are not a, a, not a working machine. So you have your own your life and also work. So uh, at the moment, 38 hours per week is the uh, recommended hours in Australia, which is, which means that you have plenty of hours in a week or in a month to have your own time and for your, your family as well. It's, I guess it's very important to have a, a your own quality time with, um, or uh, well, hobbies and families and friends, uh, to to uh, to recharge, uh, and you're ready for the your best uh, performance at work as well. Um, that's the biggest factor for me, and also good holidays as well. <laughs> True, true, true. It's very different because I, I'm also working in an Asia country. So 38 hours per week sounds a dream. <laughs> it is indeed. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Nak. So we will start um receiving questions uh for the QA. So we have actually got a list of questions ready. So oh. we yeah, we will be do uh we will be starting with some questions about chemistry. Ooh, okay. So uh Mackenzie, we are going to start doing our QA session. So the first question would be. I want to ask, is there a lot of chemistry involved in the course? So since we moved to um, our three-year degree, the amount of chemistry has decreased. Um, oh. They now do a 12.5% unit, and it's it's like pharmacy chemistry. So it's called the molecular basis of pharmaceutics and pharmacology. Um, and, yeah, it's it's pharmacy based chemistry um and it they really they re they need a good working knowledge of chemistry to complete the pharmaceutical science units um and other than that that's it that's the only chemistry that you really need okay okay so because um the question is very specific so i guess it's not about organic or inorganic chemistry according to your answer, right? It's, 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 you know, a little bit more chemistry than year 12 chemistry, um, but it's really just getting them to be able to use their chemistry knowledge in the area of pharmacy. Um, okay. However, maths is important. You need to be able to calculate a dose. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, working, com working knowledge of chemistry, um, and, you know, good math skills. Okay. So let me ask Nak the same question as well, because Nak said he doesn't have any science background before. So do you find the chemistry very hard for you? It was not actually. It it's pretty much the same as um overseas chemistry course, year twelve course, I guess. Um, so South Korea or okay. any any Asian countries who um uh, finished their uh the high school course, and uh, I think it's pretty capable to carry on. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good to know. Okay, so um that the next question would be for Mackenzie because the uh the agent and all the students wants to know about the assignment and also the assessment and in particular they want to know how many days in a week they will need to attend class. So most of the units are designed around um ten hours per week, um of 
commitment. Uh, so it's basically equivalent to a full-time job if you are studying full-time uh, in Australia, as as you guys just talked about. <laughs> um, so most units have, well, they have to have two hours on campus. Um, that's part of our rules of accreditation. Um, and then it could be another up to four hours on campus doing activities. Uh, and then the rest is um, online learning. Um, sometimes that is uh, dialing into, you know, an online Zoom session. Uh, sometimes it is reading material in their own time. Okay. So do you reckon they would need to be on campus five days per week or less than that? normally works out to be about four days four days yes okay. um you know we try to timetable it so it's convenient for the students as well um you know it doesn't always happen that way uh so often it's you know half a day and probably four times a week that they end up being on campus okay okay cool so, okay we have covered um internship we have covered uh practical okay so uh because we have mentioned in our uh, slides that um in 2022 100 percent of our graduate can secure a full-time job so um they want to know whether it's all related to pharmacy or is some something else under the registration guidelines, so if you are actually becoming a registered pharmacist, you have to do those um, supervised hours in a community pharmacy or a hospital pharmacy. So those 100% of graduates that got a job, yes, it was in a pharmacy. Okay, so all of them are related to pharmacy. Yep. Okay. There's lots of other different opportunities um, in other healthcare areas, but yeah, to do that, yeah, that first year, you have to do it in pharmacy. Okay. Okay. And then one of the questions is actually asking about Master of Pharmacy. But as our course is already an accredited course, I don't think the students would need to do a Master of Pharmacy, right? So uh, the, the ones that want to become a registered pharmacist, they just need to do the Bachelor of Pharmacy. Okay. Um, we do we do offer a couple of master's programs after that, um, but that doesn't get you to be a registered pharmacist. So, okay, okay, okay. So next question, I will divert it to Nak because the students wants to know what is the life like in Tasmania. Life like, uh, pretty relaxed. Uh, uh. Um, well, look, my life is very simple. Uh, in the morning, I go work and uh, finish at uh, five, sometimes six, and Monday to Thursday, weekend three days off, I go camping <laughs> or do all my hobbies. Uh, sometimes I do casual jobs here and there, so I have lots of friends and I have contacts, so uh, they ring me whether I can. <laughs> cover their shift here and there uh, all of Tasmania so yeah if I want to do more work and do extra cash yes I do but yeah it's pretty simple life um, after work I don't need to worry about work and I do what I like yeah that sounds good Okay, so next question would be facility. So can I divert this question to Mackenzie about our facilities for students? So we in Hobart, um, we've just updated uh, at the start of this year um, a compounding laboratory, which is uh, where all of our Bachelor of Pharmacy students learn to make, you know, their creams and suspensions and things. Um, and that's, you know, got full AV equipment. It's a really great facility now. Um, we are about, we've got two computer labs um, in the, on the Hobart campus as well. Uh, and one of those is about to undergo um, a big update. Um, Launceston is in the midst of moving campuses. So they are, 
currently at Newnham, which is just a suburb of Launceston, um, but there is a brand new facility on the river um, called Inveresk and some of the classes are there, some of them are at Newnham. Um, it's a little bit movable at the moment. Uh, and the Cradle Coast campus up in Burnie is probably a year old, two years old. It's very, very new. So great facilities at all campuses at the moment. Okay. So um, the students wants to know whether they will get paid during placements? No, they don't. Um, so it's considered part of your course. Uh, so you, the placements are belong to one of the units that you are doing. Um, so no, there is no payment. However, if you are relocating for the placement, um, there is often travel and accommodation um, expenses that can be covered uh, by the school. Okay, so uh, just now you have mentioned about uh, the placement opportunities in Canada and New Zealand. Um, can you um, tell us more about it? Uh, so the Canada placement, um, they go to Newfoundland, which is on the other side of Canada, on the, the east coast of Canada. Um, and uh, they do a mix of uh, hospital and community placements while they're over there. Um, and the New Zealand one is new. So um, we haven't, I think this is the first year that we are sending students to New Zealand. Uh, we do have one of our um, alumni and also a previous academic staff member who works over there. And I believe that most of the placement will be with him. He works in one of the hospitals over there. So yeah. That's a bit exciting. Um, we do have um, agreements with a UK um, university and pharmacy sites, but um, unfortunately, there's a bit of um, a, a bit of a problem in their healthcare system at the moment, and they just can't um, take extra students at the moment. So, yeah, so we can't use them this next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess the opportunity is not for all students, right? have uh, a good GPA um, and basically they apply if they are interested in going internationally they apply um, and you know there is a process they have to write you know a, an a application uh, and it is reviewed by the placement team to decide who gets to go um, and it is needed to be funded um, from their own money as well so um, the school gives them a certain amount of money, but most needs to be covered by the student to under, undertake an international placement. Okay, okay. So next question is asking the study support from senior student. So I guess uh, Mackenzie has just uh, covered the pass. So um, that's, that's one of them. So we do. We've got a mentorship program within the School mm -hmm. of Pharmacy as well. So the um, students in the upper levels um, are buddied up with one of the first years, um, so that they do get support that way. Uh, and our student support team, the academic staff members that work in that, uh, are excellent as well. So they um, they can't necessarily help with um, language and English writing skills um, and things like that, but you know, calculations for pharmacy or learning to counsel a patient, that's where um, the academic student support um, really helps in our school. Okay. So can I ask Nick to say, uh, the, uh, Nak, the same question as well? Do you get any support from your senior students during your days as a Utah student? Yeah, of course. Uh, we had a, a good, really good relationship, uh, not only between the, um, the, the, um, high grade student, but also your own, um, your same year, um, that, that we help each other. So, and also if you seek help, there is plenty of opportunity to approach um, from school, from the community, also from um, society as well. So there's plenty, I guess, yeah. That's good, that's good, good to know. Okay, so internship, there are quite there is a question asking whether the students can actually do the internship um in other states instead of just doing it in Tasmania. Yes, you definitely can. Um so I just want to confirm that um 
placements is what happens when you are an undergraduate student before you have graduated. The internship, that is a paid position. So they get paid as an intern for a full year. Um, and so, you know, if you want to move to do your internship, then you definitely can. So placement would be in Tasmania, but internship, it can uh, it can be anywhere in Australia. Uh, and so placements. So the placements, um, they can do um, in Tassie, in Australia, international. Um, internships, uh, most likely they stay in Tasmania, but they can go anywhere in Australia. But you can't do your internship overseas. Mm. Okay, cool. So next question is about, is it hard to study? I think we have covered when I'm asking NACTA questions. And then international student, is it difficult to get a job? I think NACTA has covered that during his part as well. So last but not least from my list would be, uh, how did you prepare the registration examination? Do we offer any? Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I can tell you a little bit about it um, because I'm actually one of the board examiners. So oh. um, the students um, do, unfortunately, I can't examine UTAS graduates, but I can um, examine uh, other graduates from other universities. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, I can tell you about the exam. I don't know how to prepare for it because I haven't had to do it recently so <laughs> <laughs> so that's next question yeah that can, that can answer that one <laughs> once you successfully finish your internship then you are um uh I think you are ready to go um so um you're not alone you have your preceptor and your preceptor um uh, shows you and, and guides you uh, how to become a uh, successful uh, pharmacist and not only from how to process all the work process but also uh, your knowledge part and um, communi communication part problem solving part so it, day in day out you learn uh, different things and it's it's part of um, your it, it's 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 the exam itself so every day so once you successfully finish your internship oh, it should be um all good but also you need to have a good knowledge as well so yeah um for international as i said it's nothing different um from domestic students so it should be all good cool. thank you so twee is there any questions that we need to cover from the q and a um, there's two one that I think that can answer. Uh, the first one is uh, about one of the experience, how to get, um, like how to successful when apply for jobs. Like, do we need to personally hand in resume? Um, as um, I heard that the resume in person works better. And the other one is what challenges are typically associated with pharmacies, uh, pharmacies. So I think what is the challenge that you face um, during the course? Thank you. Oh, during the course. Okay. Um, finding work. I the, the pharmacy I manage is right in the city. It's very close to Utah's accommodation. I've I have received tons of resume. And uh, so does other pharmacists in in city circle area, in Hobart. But I do occasionally do locums, which is a casual job in uh, the bit um, distanced area. Uh, when I say distance, about twenty minutes away from city, and it's heaps of job opportunities out there, <laughs> not in city circle area because. Um, I, I didn't see that many of um, applicants uh, for the pharmacy assistant position um, bit, um, 20 minutes away, 15 minutes away from Hobart City. Um, not many international students. That I had I, um, two other students came in last week to find a job. 
and I suggest them to go to travel a bit far, uh, not only in city, but travel with your bus or if you have an own car, go there, you might find a job straight away. So that's one tip. <laughs> the other one um, is obviously um, you can email your resume, but if on, in community pharmacy, I, I personally prefer to see uh, the employee um, or students if they come and have a chat, decent chat. And yeah, and that's my own preference, but it is my <laughs> preference. So can't say um, whether it's preferable for everybody or not. Um, some of challenges in during school, um, it it's, I guess not, it was not for me, but some students struggle because they only focused on study. So they stuck in their room, study 24 seven, uh, get a good, really super good GPA, but then again, no friends. That that's that that was um that was I um witnessed uh quite a few occasions. And for it it's hard for international students who uh doesn't speak fluent English or 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 um no friends from the beginning, but again it's it's um it's all about attitude. Um, sorry, you you open yourself first, and then then someone approach, and then you need to approach someone else to become a friend of them, because um, um, uh, everybody's willing to uh be a friend of yours. So um, believe it or not, they we all uh do care about international students. Okay, so. It's already seven. So one last question that we can pack it up is, okay, so that's a question for Mackenzie. Um, can you actually compare between our three years course with some other competitors that are offering a master degree? Do you think it like any difference between the fast course or those ones that are doing the master course, would there be any difference? Um, I believe that the ones doing the master's course in order to become a registered pharmacist have already got a health degree. Is that correct? I, I To be honest, we don't offer that pathway, yeah. so I'm not really um, that familiar with um, doing a master's. Um, mm -hmm. to become a registered pharmacist. But, yeah, I believe it would actually end up being more years from what I understand. Um, so three-year fast track, you know, it is, it's intense. Um, they Traditionally, students are used to having a good summer break, but now there's a study period over the summer. So um, we're only in our first year of running the three-year degree. Uh, so we will we'll have to um, see how how you know what what we can offer the students in order to help them um, cope and get through um, such an intense um, fast track degree. Okay, yeah, it, it is a very intense course. We do constantly receiving some questions from agents and students asking whether they have a choice to do it in four years instead of a three years. <laughs> Mm. And then we said, sorry, we only offer a four, three years program. Yeah. So do you think the students are doing well at the moment? Because they are the first, uh, they are the first cohort, first cohorts that are doing it in a three years manner. Do you think they, they find it hard? Yeah, I think they are doing well. Um, of course, you know, Pharmacy, it is a hard course. Um, and so we have had a few that are going to need to repeat units, but um, there is some really, really good students um, in the cohort as well. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. So thank you so much for everyone's time. 
thanks Mackenzie. Thanks, Nock, for your time today. It's a very useful session, very informative, very inspiring. Love all the comments, all the answers of the session. So for our particip uh, participants, if you have any questions that you still have for us, please feel free to send us emails after. So I will just leave my email in the chat box. So in case you have any questions that we haven't picked up today, please feel free to send me an email after. I will divert them to um, Mackenzie or Nak for the answer. So thank you so much. Yeah, Tui has already left the email in the chat as well. So uh, we will have the session open for another minute for everyone to copy the email address. And thank you so much for your time, Nak and Mackenzie. And good night and or good afternoon. Uh, like uh, goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.